Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number 6. Book in the Bible would be Joshua. Joshua is the sixth book in the Bible. And if you were to get an extended study into Isaiah, you'd probably find a match. In the year that King Uzziah died, Uzziah was that leper king. I, Isaiah, I don't know if I saw it, said Ezekiel, Isaiah, saw the Lord. That's interesting. God is a spirit that Jesus said. And there may be an eternity a manifestation of God that you will see in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But Isaiah, B.C., before Christ, not a liar, said he saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train that would be to draw along, not a choo-choo train, filled the temple. What would be the train? The draw along. When a bride goes down the aisle of her, of her marriage, her dress called the train follows her. The Bible speaks of fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. God being first to fill the to fill the temple, I would assume, this is me personal, all the heavenly hosts that follow God. The angels, the seraphims, the, the cherubims. Knows the temple. In Jerusalem. Above it stood the cherubim. Now John and Ezekiel see cherubim, C-H. Isaiah sees another creature called seraphim. They're different because they're spelt different. But they're like in some ways and not in others. When you compare John and Ezekiel and Isaiah's vision, John for Revelation chapter 4, Ezekiel chapter 1, they are different. Each one had six wings. Well, the cherubim that were on the ark had two wings each. You have to go see Ezekiel 1 to see how many wings they have. They are not angels. Angels don't have wings when you read the Bible. When the angels appeared before Abram and uh, Jacob and Lot, and Manoah's wife, Samson's parents, they would come back and say, hey, we've seen a man. We've seen men. We didn't see winged creatures. But cherubims are winged or have wings. With twain, that's two, he covered, with twain he covered his face. With twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly. Now the third set is not told where they are. But the third set tells us that they are used for flying. And the second set there with the feet. Kind of interesting if you were looking at a, a tire company. And they show a shoe with wings. I forget which Greek god that is. He's also symbolizing, uh, I think it's the florist. 
of not wanting a communication plate. You know, here's his foot, and it's got wings. Well, that's where they stole it from. They stole it from God, from God's seraphim. Now, why do they have wings on their face and feet and fly? I got the, I got the answer. I don't know. That's where God wanted to put them. That was so hard to figure out, wasn't it? So Ezekiel 1, 6 and Revelation 4, 8. When I watch this, one cried unto another. One cried unto another. There are seraphims, S, plural. And said, holy, holy, holy. Go to Revelation 4 and see what the cherubim said. Is the Lord. Well, Isaiah says, I saw the Lord. Capital L, small O, little R, little D. Holy, holy, holy is the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Now get that. That's Jehovah. That is God himself that they are praising. Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled of his glory. Even when the nation is sick, chapter 1. Even when the nation's doing wrong, chapter 1. Listen, God's going to get glory by somebody. The entire world pleaded judgment in Noah's time, but eight people gave God the glory. Four people on this earth one time, only four. One went up to, to God with a voluntary offering, and it pleased God. The entire city of, of, of destruction as Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities. And as vile that Lot has got his life into, he still gave God the glory. The Bible calls him just. As bad as, as I, I'm not talking about the wicked, I'm not talking about Satan's church, but as the, the churches that claim to be of God by being born again by a King James Bible that are failing, God still gets the glory of one person or one family or a group of people in that church who love him and still try to do what he tells to do. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. And that's not, whole, that's not unholy smoke. There is actually holy smoke of God. So Isaiah sees God. He sees his servants what no one else has seen. John sees a, a, a light. But John sees it in glory. Isaiah sees it in the, the temple in Jerusalem. Now maybe that's the difference between John and Isaiah. The, the place where they are. Well that's all I'm going to say. Because I can't. Tell the difference between the seraphims and the cherubims. Then said I, Isaiah speaking, Woe is me, for I am undone. You know, if you truly want to do, you know, the people, oh, God this, God that, I love Jesus, sweet Jesus, the Lord love. If you truly want to want God when you meet God, when God manifests himself to you, it will cause you to repent. It will cause you to get in sorrow. 
It will cause you to get to know your sins. It will get to know that you're undone. All have sinned and come to the short of glory of God. It will not make you proud. It will not make you pride. It will not, oh, I've seen this angel. I've seen, you know, God in a piece of toast. And, and God spoke to me. And the angel spoke to me. No. You'll fall down, get on your knees, and try to get right. Because you know you're standing before a holy God. And you'll be fear and tremble and realize that one wrong thing and God, pff, you're, you're smoking at you. You realize that God is holy and you're not holy. You are in the presence of God. How do you know if a message is really truly a message of God when you realize you're not holy? And God is reaching down from heaven speaking to you personally. And you don't have to go to an altar. Listen, if the preacher is halfway through the message or just began the message, before the message is done, you can get right. We've got 60 more chapters to go with Isaiah. He got right. Now the altar, no, that's not wrong. That's, that's, that's a public confession to get up there and say, hey, before everybody, I'm going to do right. There's something in my heart, whether right or wrong. But when God shows himself to you, you're not going to lift yourself up. And if, if you proclaim or anybody proclaim, oh, God spoke to me, God, and, and you got pride, God didn't speak to you. Or you got in the flesh and then realized and, and the revelation of, of God was gone. Because it says, Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. Ooh, you mean Isaiah is, is, is confessing that his lips don't say what they should? Go read what James has to say about the tongue. And I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. Now, not only am I unclean, first, notice he puts himself first. It's not what the people three rows on the other side of the church is doing. It's what you're doing. That's first. Oh, America, 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 what about you? Then when you're done with yourself and you're judging yourself, I dwell in a, in a midst of people of unclean lips. Go back to verse 1. In the year that the king Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. Capital L, small O, small R, small D. The cherubim are speaking before Isaiah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, capital K, of the King, the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, of hosts, Luke 5, 8. Job 42 6, Isaiah saw God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Look at that. And for your Jehovah Witness buddies, he saw the Lord, he heard the cherubims worship the Lord, Jehovah, and he said, I have seen. The king. Well, who is that? Now, don't you think when Jesus is on Calvary's hill, Pilate puts that accusation up there, the king of kings. Don't you think that Isaiah chapter 6 came in the picture? Don't say he's the king of the Jews. Don't say that. Say he said he was the king of the Jews. I have written what I have written. 
Isaiah said, the king. There he is. In the Trinity. With God. Before his incarnation. Worshipped by Isaiah. As God. As king. And he hasn't even been born. He's not king now. He will be. Then flew one of the seraphim unto me. Oh, they fly. You don't see Michael flying. There's an angel in Revelation that's flying through the mid but where do you get the you know where do you get the wings? Oh, here we got wings. But where do you see that other angel with wings? You know, a rock could fly through the air that was thrown. It don't have to have wings. I can pick up my dog and throw him through the air and say, hey, "Look, my dog is flying through the air. He ain't got wings." Look at the leaves flying through the air. They don't have wings. You can fly and not have wings. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. So he's not holding it. But he walks up to the altar, picks up a pair, uh, picks up a, a piece of coal. From the altar, Jerusalem. And he laid it upon my mouth. Ow. That's a live coal. It's, it's hot. But it doesn't burn. Shadrach, Meshach, and Nuko. As they walked with... I see, I see a fourth man in the fire. Isn't that interesting? Lo, this has touched thy lips. Why? Because they're unclean. And thy iniquity acknowledges his iniquity. is taken away by the blood of the Lamb. No. By a fire off the of the altar. Well, you don't see that being preached in any churches here. What must I do to be saved? Burn your lips with this coal. Guess no one wants to try that one. Thy iniquity is taken away and thy sin. Purge, purity, cleanse, and not by blood. Old Testament is by fire. New Testament is by the blood of Jesus Christ, Hebrews 1, 3, and 9, 14. So people in the Old Testament are not saved like we're saved. And there's a church that got it backwards where they put the ashes on the forehead. And if you want to be an Old Testament church, you put the coal on the mouth. Give yourself a nice little burn. Isaiah didn't get a burn. He got purged. Explain that. The coal touched his lips and he got purged, but he didn't get burned. That's a miracle. Don't try it. But you know what? It's tried by thousands, if not millions of people presently today. As they put a cigarette filter in their mouth to smoke, which has coal, charcoal, and it's burning. And it don't purify you. And it don't purify your lips. Matter of fact, in some cases, you may get cancer to lips, tongue, mouth, lungs. So that's an imitation of what's going on right here. It's an unholy cleansing of no cleansing. Make you more vile. 
how many people stand before the judgment seat of Christ of unclean lips because they stuck a piece of coal in their mouth to, 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 to light it up. And, uh, excuse me, also I heard the voice of the Lord. Capital L, small r, small o, small r, small d. The Holy Spirit speaking. Who shall I send? And who will go for us? There's the Trinity. The Holy Spirit speaking to Isaiah in a, in a work of the ministry. And he doesn't speak to Isaiah until he has his sins purged. Don't you think you're going to go into any calling of the Lord when you've got sin in your life? The Holy Spirit did not speak until the sin was purged. Then said I, Isaiah, and this is my calling. This is what I say to the Lord. Here am I. Send me. Now we're going to stop right there. We could go finish the whole chapter. There's only 13 verses. But I want to stop there because we we de we dealt with a lot of information here. I don't want you to lose. But I want to get next time, Lord willing, that when a man takes the call of the Lord to go in all the world and preach the gospel, I want you to get by the next lesson. It's no easy thing. You're not going to get him saved by thousands, by millions. I think this is a good stop to stop right here and and let it rest and let the Lord do the work next time.